All right, so November is a month of building. We're gonna be building out how to make internet money on the new website, the link's below, go check it out. And we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff and I got so much to do. I've got so much to actually exhume and go through and I've gotta put it together, but there's gonna be a whole bunch of new training that's coming that's set up for you. And straight up, what you need to do is go ahead, go to that website, watch all the videos. There's only two, so it's not that much. And just stay tuned to that because we're gonna be releasing the new training at some point in November. So go ahead and get into that. And let's get into this video. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I can tell from the last video's comments who's gonna get this money in the next recession or not. One of the things that I find to be really interesting, you have a lot of people who are looking for information to make money for free. And I gave you guys information for free to make money. And all I got was a bunch of, well, van life, there are people with van life are coming off the road. Well, there's no way that you can find a van for $3,000. I just hit Craigslist and in six seconds, I found five vans for $3,000. I guarantee you, if I was to sit down for an hour, I would probably come across 30 vans, 30 vans for under $3,000. So let me tell you a story. Years and years ago, when I was in the storage auction business, I went to an auction, just an auction, I found online. And I bought a Ford E250 van, white, with a dent in the front for 1500 bucks. That van ran for about eight years without a problem. 1500 bucks, I think it had like 200,000 miles on it. And I put the key in it, crunk up, drove it, drove it to auctions and stuff, drove it to pick up stuff. And one of the things I find to be really interesting is the majority of you don't know how to shop. Uh, you don't know how to find deals. And I'm going to tell you, right now, with inflation going crazy, if you know how to shop, if you know how to dig, if you know how to look for deals, you can find deals right now during all this inflation where the people on TikTok are crying about the price of dog food, crying about, oh man, the eggs and coffee is so expensive. Oh my God, what am I going to do? We may go homeless. Right now, for the people who have the right mindset, because in that last video, I saw a lot of people who had the wrong mindset about how to make money. Because here's the thing, and this is really, really huge. The pathway to making money is not going to be simple and easy. Let me go ahead and give you some more insights on the van life thing. Like once again, you go ahead and you create a YouTube channel, right? And you was like, hey, my name is Josh and I'm starting the van rebuild business for van. Just, just go ahead and call it Josh's van life, right? And you go ahead and put on YouTube the whole process of you finding vans, finding vans. Then that's gonna get you YouTube money. Then you document the process of refurbishing the van. That's gonna get you YouTube money. That's gonna get you sponsors. So, and then once you get it rolling up and it's like, all right, this is Josh, I'm in um, Augusta, Georgia, wherever you are. And this van, uh, you, saw, you saw I sourced it, uh, we refurbished it, we did things. Now this van is for sale. We're gonna call this van Lucy. I guarantee you, if you did that, all of that work and documented and went through those processes, once you put that van on YouTube and it's for sale, and let's say you spent $5,000 
and you know, we feel that we want $12,000 cash for Lucy. You're gonna get it. This video of you advertising this van for sale is gonna make money and selling the van is gonna make money. And then you go ahead, it's like, hey, this is Josh. We had our first van sale was successful. We're about to do it again. Document the whole process of looking for the van. And at this point, you've got your channel, you've got your document, your, your, your stuff. And then what you will do is reach out to all of these companies that supply stuff for vans. You reach out to battery companies, you reach out to heating, and then your next one, this video was sponsored by Woo Woo Coolers or something something fire or something, essentially the, store, the people who make the things for the refurbished vans. And essentially, as you go along, you would like, this video is sponsored by such and such coolers. This video is sponsored by such and such thing. And then what you will work out is a deal. It's like, hey, y'all guys don't have to pay me. You don't have to pay me. What I want is a cut of the sales, right? And you put a link under your video and every time someone buys something, you get a cut. So now you're making money from the vans, money from YouTube, money from affiliate marketing. And literally, in less than a year, you got a six figure business. Less than a year. And like, once again, I want you to go back to that video because th this is one of the biggest problems I have with a lot of, I'm just gonna say it, lazy people. Lazy, they don't wanna do it, they don't wanna do the work, but they will sit and complain, it's like, well Glennon ain't giving us none. I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I have given you guys tons of jewels over the years, and some people have picked up the jewels and went ahead and shined them up and made money. Now, for the lazy folks, for the lazy folks who, who come to this channel, who wanna moan this stuff, because this is what you're looking for. Let me tell you what you're looking for. You're looking for something simple, easy, and profitable. Simple, easy, something that I could tell you, you could go out and do tomorrow and make a thousand bucks a day. That's what you're looking for. And you and millions and millions and millions of people are looking for that. And it don't exist because, let me tell you another story. When I was in the storage auction business, I remember having a conversation with this guy who had been doing storage auctions for, I don't know how, a long time. And he told me, told me right again, he said, don't make this a, a permanent thing. Don't make this a full-time thing, you'll be disappointed. Just keep it part-time. And he told me that. And I completely ignored him. After I went through the process of learning how to buy units, because that's a process. And then once I learned how to scale up and I learned how to sell, this business in the early days was doing $20,000, $30,000 a month, gross revenue, spending maybe 7,000, so that was $23,000 profit for two people. And we, we just kept get, doing it, doing it, doing it. And the very things he told me that I shouldn't set my sights on, that I shouldn't do, that's exactly what I did. We turned it into a full-time functioning business uh, with other assets. We were selling on eBay, we were selling on Amazon, we were selling on Craigslist. Facebook Marketplace didn't really exist. Now, I went ahead and did a little research because I've been out the storage auction business 15 years. So I don't know what it's like to do storage auctions today. And I went to Reddit and someone bought some units and apparently a lot of these places have switched to having their auctions online. I have never bought a storage auction online. I, I just wouldn't do it because here's the thing from my years and years of experience. When you're there, you get to see, you get to smell, and you get to investigate. Online, you just get a picture. You cannot, like, let me tell you one of my little secrets. One of the things I used to do is get down low in a push-up position and do some push-ups, right? I'm doing my push-ups, right? And they're like, oh, he doing exercises. No, I'm not. I'm looking in the back of the unit. 
Because see, when you get at different angles and you learn how to look, you could see stuff like, oh, that's two nightstands. So there's a bedroom set in there. Oh, that's the foot of a refrigerator. Oh, there's a washer and dryer. You can see things and you can bend on what you can see. But a picture online, you're seriously, seriously uh, handicapped. I don't really know how storage auctions work today with the majority of them being online bids and they having um, pretty much serious control over your access to the storage facility in the loading and unloading times. And this guy, he wrote up a pretty long post and essentially he bought three units. He wished he didn't get the first one and he made no money. He made no money. So one of the things that you guys have got to understand, just like this guy told me years and years ago, um, do not pin your hopes and wishes and dreams on this being a successful business. Now that I've been away, I know of ways that I could have made that business more automated, but, 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 since they have flipped to having most of these auctions online, I don't really know how that would work. I don't really, really know how that would work, especially with today's marketplace. But once again, you guys are like crying for ideals and ways to make money. And I'll give you one and all I get is complaints, 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 complaints from the lazy people. I'm gonna say that. We're gonna qualify the people who are complaining because I saw it, there was a comment. You can go back to the video and it's like, there's no way you can get a van for $3,000. Do this, go to Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, put your level at $3,000 and see how many vans you will find. See how many vans you find. And then it was like, there's no way that you can refurbish it for 2,000. Really? How, how would you know? How would you know? Cause you're not doing it. You don't even have the sense of mind to go to Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and look to see if you can find vans before putting up your comment. And like anyone that wants to go ahead and say, oh, you can't find vans for three, I can tell you right now, you can find cars, uh, you can get houses on the deal if you know how to shop, if you know what to look for, if you're positioned for the deal. Uh, one of the things that I noticed with my cars, because at one point I had 12 wrecked cars and two stolen cars. One stolen car recovered, actually more than two stolen cars. And I had this one guy that I ended up selling three cars to him because he was prepared for the deals. This guy had a tow truck and he came and got the cars on this tow truck, paid me the cash because these renters, they were horrible on these cars. Each one of these cars that I got was in mint condition, mint condition. When I shut down the store, that car rental business, I had three cars, like, let me just tell you, I had this beautiful blue BMW 335i. Beautiful car with the rims, very, very sexy car. I had a demo person, let me go ahead and say demo. Demo people who are people who destroy stuff, people who are nasty and mean. Left his gold teeth in the car one time. There was something going on with the car. Instead of this demo person telling me, he just kept driving it. Just kept driving it. So I get the car back and I have to have the car towed to uh, the mechanic. And the mechanic calls me up and he says, hey, you're gonna need a whole new engine. I said, what? And he told me. And instead of this guy telling me there was something wrong with the car, he just kept driving it. Just kept driving it. You wanna know why he kept driving it? Cause it wasn't his responsibility. He didn't own it, he didn't have to worry about it. He didn't have to pay insurance. All he had to do is to pay rent money and drive. And he drove it into the ground. And this is funny. I paid $8,000 for that car. And I sold it on Craigslist for 3,500 to someone who came with a pickup truck and came with a trailer to tow it. Why did they come with a trailer to tow it? Because I told them, this car's engine needs to be replaced. If you're looking for a beautiful BMW 335i, this is the car. The interior is nice, everything, pictures are tired, the rims are nice, everything, but the engine's jacked. Transmission should be good, but the engine's jacked. 
That was my ad and I sold it for 3,500 bucks. And these people came with a truck and the trailer. We talked. Incidentally, the car would start and he's like, I don't know what that sound is. I was like, hey, the engine's messed up. I'm just letting you know. He gave me the cash, took the car and went off by this business. And essentially, there are people who are prepared to make money. And there's a group of people out here. Once again, let's refer to these people as the lazy people who will not actually do anything because this guy who had the tow truck who bought three cars from me, which were once again, pristine condition when I bought them, I started renting them out to these demo people. They just totally destroyed them. And uh, he had a demo truck, he had a tow truck. He was a mechanic and he had a garage. So this is why he got himself three cars at a really good deal because he was positioned to get good deals. But a lot of you, once again, hey, you know, keep looking for that simple, easy thing. And I'm gonna tell you something that happened when I started talking about storage auctions on YouTube. People were getting pissed. It's like, man, stop telling people about this. See, that this is what y'all are looking for. You're looking for something that's simple and easy to do that a lot of people don't know about. And you don't want, you don't want it, you, you wanna, you want someone to tell you. You want someone to tell you. But you don't want anyone to tell anyone else, so you can go in and get it. And knowing what I know today, the storage auction business was completely hidden. Um, if I had the ability to go back in time, I would do the business totally different, totally different. Number one, going back in time with my knowledge base, knowing what I know now, I would go ahead and instantly um, set up a big shop, a huge shop. I would borrow money, I would borrow money, and I would set up maybe a 10,000 square foot shop, maybe a 20, and I would be buying my ass off. I mean, you know, at my height, I was doing, when I was really, really getting it, I was doing 20 to 30 units a month. I would come out the gate and I would be trying to buy 50 to 100 units per month, knowing what I know now. And I would just shove it all in that store and I would shove it all in that store. And I would establish an eBay department. I would establish an Amazon department. I would establish an Amazon book department, two, two different departments for Amazon. I would establish different eBay accounts. I would do it totally differently because now I have something that's called, that's very, very important to have. I have knowledge. I know about the business and I would do it a totally different way. I would come out the gate and I would go to Penske and Enterprise and lease two 24, 26 foot trucks instantly. I would hire drivers, I would hire loaders. It would be a totally different thing. Cause see, when I got in the storage auction business, I didn't know what I was getting into. I, I had no, no, but if I was to go back with the knowledge that I have now, and I would keep track of when they're going to go to doing the storage auctions, on, online auctions, because essentially I would create an exit plan on how to get out of the business once they start going online, or we, we would judge that. But essentially, there's gonna be someone who's gonna see that van life video and they're gonna take it to heart and they're gonna do everything I told them to do and they're gonna make a lot of money. And there's gonna be a bunch of people, and I'm gonna say 90% of the people who watch the video are like, eh, it ain't gonna work. It's too much effort. It ain't gonna work. I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna involve myself. I don't wanna spend the money. I don't wanna do all, and that, that's, that's the other part. W-O-R-K, work. That's, that's the big, big issue. You will have to work. You would have to work. There is a guy on YouTube, his name is Duralex or Dur Dur something, and he does van life rebuilds. He's put up van. But see, he ain't doing it the way that I would do it. Because essentially, he should be going out, shopping for vans, reconditioning them and selling them, and he should go ahead and assemble himself a little team because 
One of the things I've seen from van life builds is they take a long time if it's just you doing it. So I would go ahead and get a guy to handle the wood. I would get a guy, you know, I would go ahead. Because do you know Waffle House? Uh, I don't know if, I have not even seen a new Waffle House in years. But Waffle House had it set up where they can, once the restaurant part is built, they can have that bad boy open in 72 hours because they had a system. We're going to put this in. You ever go into a Waffle House and notice that they're all identical? They're exactly the same. There's a reason. So if this dude to create a system, instead of it taking him months to rebuild the van, he could literally do it in a few days, a few days by going ahead and getting the people. Because once again, he already has the knowledge. He already has the knowledge because he's rebuilt many, many vans. But he needs to go ahead and get a team and then, you know, a camera person to record everything. Like, like once again, it, this could be a valuable business. Now, I'm going to answer your question because I know it's like, if this is such a good business, why don't you do it? Great question. Van life ain't my thing. It's just not my thing. And I will say this. I have found other forms of businesses that are more to my personality, so to speak. More to my personality, and that's what I'm gonna stick with because the rental car business, and those videos will be coming on Mad Money in probably next month. Um, I've learned that it's very important for me to stick close to what I know since I've had established businesses. Now for you as a brand new business owner who's never made any money doing anything, van life could be really cool for you because it would be your first experience. Uh, I sold commercial office furniture, I made six figures. Uh, I sold used stuff and I made seven figures over a period of time. So once again, it's about my experience. It's about me where I'm at. So that's why I'm not running off trying to do van life uh, because I have different plans, I have different things I'm gonna work on, and I have different things that I need to do. And one of the things that you should do, and I just had someone buy some, some information today. <sighs> you know, I, I, got, I gotta tell him, he's trying to do it on his phone. Okay, phones are great, phones are powerful, but if you want to be established in this creative economy, you need to go ahead and get yourself a laptop, preferably a desktop, so you can learn better. Because I'm just sitting here looking at stuff on your phone, I can just see all of the nightmares and stuff that's gonna happen. So this is something I'll bring up with the new training. But once again, that hustler's mindset, the people with the right mindset, the people who will dig deep, the people who will do the things that they need to do, the people who will establish things in a different manner. These are the people who are going to win. These are the people who are going to make that money. These are the people who are going to do amazing things. Because like I said, I was just going through the comments and all I saw was people, and I, I thought it was funny. This, this guy's there ain't no way you could buy a van for $3,000. Yes, there is. You could go out and buy a van for $3,000 that starts, drives, and runs just fine. You can, if you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to do the work. And this is one of the things that I find to be interesting because uh, I'm probably gonna re-release the, the book, The Hustler's Mindset. I got a whole bunch of stuff to do in February, a bunch of stuff to do in February. Because many of you have a very, weak mental state when it comes to business. Extremely weak. Oh, I don't wanna do that. Cause you're looking for something simple, easy to do. That's what you're looking for. Something simple, something easy to do. And I can tell you from personal experience, unless you have some kind of inside track like, I'll tell you, inside track, I had the ability to go purchase brand new residential furniture. And because I had that license, and I was set up with Poundex, I was set up with Coaster, uh, there was Titan Importers, there was like six companies that I was set up with. 
And I got this ideal that I was gonna sell the Louis Philippi sleigh bed. I was gonna sell the king bed and I was gonna sell the queen bed because I was already plugged in. So it was easy for me to get these beds and I was selling them on Craigslist and that hustle got up to about maybe 15,000 a month in sales, that's not gross profit. So we could say gross profit was between seven and 9,000 a month because I was already plugged in. You know, if you were just to go out here and not have the plug in that I had, it just wouldn't work for you. So that was an extremely easy, lucrative hustle that worked until the price of furniture changed. Uh, people who were doing what's called container purchasing, they would buy a container of furniture. And when you buy a container of furniture, the price is like way lower. I mean, these beds was costing me like 260 to 360. Buying them by the container, those beds are costing 70 to 90 dollars a piece. Big, big difference. Big, big difference because you get them so cheap, you could sell them for what they cost me and make money. So this is one of the things that we'll be talking about. But once again, do you have the hustler's mindset? Do you have the wills to, to make money? Or are you just gonna sit back and complain? Because I find it really interesting because uh, I'm gonna pin this video under that complaint because I went to Craigslist and found a van, a Sprinter van, which would have been perfect for van life in six seconds. And I posted that and I'm gonna post this video under his comment. Cause see, this is one of the things. I don't think that y'all think that you can make money. I don't think that you can think that you can make money. And that's why it's so hard for you to make money because you don't think that you can make money. Once again, somebody's gonna take this van land thing and go crazy with it. Maybe the guy Duralex because he's, he's halfway positioned. And this guy will put up a rebuild of an RV or something, get a million views. He's already repositioned, but he doesn't have the business acumen. He doesn't know how to set this up because um, if he set it up correctly with his reach and his YouTube channel uh, support subscribers, he's sitting on a million dollar a year business million dollars if he was to set it up correctly but once again keep complaining keep saying oh you know he ain't trying to give us anything all he's trying to do is show us a course just keep being like that and keep being broke keep being poor 